Uh, right, so now you're uh, perfectly familiar with Stardust. <laughs> uh, I'm going to introduce another algorithm, that one's called uh, Selfos. It's regarded by many as uh, the state of the art, uh, and as it, um, at least when it came out, it was regarded as uh, the state of the art. Um, for those of you who did manage to get it working, you might have noticed that all of the Stardust predictions are um, convex, so they're either round, elliptical, you won't have these fancy shapes, and Stardust cannot fundamentally predict these shapes. Um, so if uh, if star shape, for example, important, uh, then uh, self is, is the way to go. Um, so I've put two links to the, the GitHub and to the, they've got a really nice website with lots of docs uh, where they explain how self works. Um, so I could go into detail into how self works and I'm um, uh, happy to explain that at the end if you want, but maybe that's not, um, the the main focus of, of this talk, but it is unit based same as Stardust. Uh, it just doesn't assume this uh, this convexity of the output shapes, and really it can output um, any fancy shape that you think of as long as it's as it's connected. Um, so the model is really uh, as good as the data that it was trained on, and uh, Selfos provides three main uh, models that are pre-trained. The first one was trained. Uh, uh, it's called the Saito model, and basically they decided to make it as general as possible, and they included every possible thing that looks like a cell. That includes seashells, onions, tomatoes, and lizard skin. Uh, so their idea was, well, if it looks remotely like a cell, we'll try and segment it. Advantages and disadvantages, of course. If you have bubbles in your slide, that might not be great. Um, that's the Saito model. There's another model that's a tissue model, so this is not from the cell phase groups. It's another data set. Um, it is by far the biggest uh, human annotated data set that exists. I think it's over 1.2 million uh, yes. hand annotated annotations. Uh, so it's a fantastic data set. It takes two channel inputs. So if you have a strong cytoplasm or membrane marker and a strong uh, nucleus marker, then uh, the tissue net train model will hopefully excel uh, for your um, uh, at that task. And finally, there's also another easy. Um, uh, pre-trained model is a live cell model. This is for a phase contrast microscopy of live cells. I'm not sure it's relevant, but uh, this model does exist as well. So quick notes on licensing. So I'm no licensing expert. The whole cell post project is open source. So it can be used commercially. However, all of the pre-trained models were trained on data sets that have a non-commercial license on it. So, I mean, I'm no legal expert, but that means that the um, the models themselves might actually be non-commercial. Uh, however, you can retrain the models uh, on your own data sets, and then you can use that commercially or whichever, and that will be uh, open or as close as you want it. <laughs> um, so these are their installation instructions. We're not going to go through a cell phone installed right now. Uh, I think these slides will be available to you, and you can go through it. The main link is at the top, and it walks uh, through how to install it. But basically, Selfos is written in Python, and uh, Keypath is written in Java. So actually, the, the link between the two is not quite optimal yet, and it still runs in Python in the background. So actually, what it'll be doing is Keypath will be writing some files on your hard drive. Uh, Python will be running in the background. Uh, Selfos will be run, and then back into Keypath. So it's incredibly slow and inefficient, but it is um, state of their accuracy, and you have access to these fantastic pre-trained models. You can also train your own models, both in QPath and uh, in Python. Um, so the main difficulty and why we're not doing it is that you have to like create your own Python environment, uh, and that can be straightforward. Um, it would be a different command for each one of you in, in this room, and so we, we just can't roll out a single sort of like instruction sheet that will work for all of you. Um, it will be uh, dependent on whether you're on Apple or Windows. It will depend on whether you want GPU support or if you don't want GPU support. But it's all well documented. If you follow that link, they'll follow, then follow on to the actual Selfos link, which will then follow you on to uh, Torch script, uh, sorry, PyTorch link, which has a really nice documentation on how to install for a MacBook, uh, GPU, uh, or I mean Windows, anything. Um, but we won't be doing that. And then finally, you will have to install the jar file just like we did in Stardust. That's the easy bit. You just drag it onto PPath. You will need to point where Python exists. That's also quite straightforward. Just tell Qpath where your Python is, and then you can run it. Um, uh, I didn't manage to get it running on MacBook. I did manage to get it running on my uh, on, on on Linux and on running on the GPU, and that was relatively straightforward. So if it works, it's really straightforward. If it doesn't work, then it can take a while to debug. I've used it extensively uh, in Python, 
my opinion, because it's it's a it's, it's Python workflow, you might as well run it from Python. Uh, that might be scary for some of you, but it makes more sense, and you won't be writing and reading so many files in the background. Um, so when is the install actually worth it? So first of all, if you run QPass as segmentation, you're not convinced. Uh, sell expansion, and you're not convinced with it, or um, and status as well is failing, then yeah, I recommend uh, you can try self pose. Uh, also, if high segmentation accuracy is crucial for you, uh, a lot of people report cell pose is actually slightly more accurate than Stardust. We found it was actually on par and they were similar. If you retrain them with the same data sets, they were similar accuracy. Um, but then it's got the overall advantage of it's it's has got high fidelity to cell shapes. So Stardust will just approximate it as a circle or an ellipse or something, uh, relatively simple shape. Cell pose doesn't have assumption. Also use it if speed is not an issue for you. Cell pose it was never designed to be an efficient workflow. Um, it's not terribly slow, but at least in QPath, there's a lot of reading and writing. You can't do it on whole slide images easily at two. Um, other advantage, if you have a strong membrane and cytoplasm marker, and you might not have a DAPI marker or a, or a nuclein marker, uh, then cell pose can actually segment cells without a nuclear marker. So it'll just look at membrane, yeah. And finally, yeah, so if you're familiar with Python and Python environments, it, the setup is actually not that scary at all if you've done it before. Uh, if you know what Anaconda or Micromamba is, then it'll be quite. Yeah, so yeah, so when have I used Selfos? I've used Selfos very little in QPath. I have done it, but mostly through Python. I found it extremely useful for these. This is also a pencil that you're now familiar with. Uh, when the extremely crowded um, uh, lymphocytes and it's extremely difficult to segment them using uh, the QPath inbuilt. And it's also really noisy. This is a mice, mass cytometry image, so the resolution is also really low. I think it's one micron per pixel. Uh, so usually you actually have to like blow it up because uh, because uh, cell phones are trained on high resolution. But you can sort of just like linear, linearly interpolate that image, smooth it a little bit, make it look like an actual fluorescent image, and then cell phones will excel. Uh, this is a tissue net model, so it was trained on these 1.2 million annotations. Uh, and I was quite happy with the uh, with the results. Um, so now I'm sort of going to talk about future directions of how uh, we're going to be running deep learning models in QBath in the future. So we've all um, you've all seen the struggle of installing uh, Starlist. Uh, I you some of you will struggle uh, installing Selfos, and really it's not because we wanted to make it difficult. Obviously, it's just because. Um, there's a lot of things going on. They're implemented in different languages. So all of these deep learning models are always implemented and developed in Python. Uh, might be a few counter examples, but they're always developed in Python. But then people like you, you actually run it through Java and making the connection is really difficult. So it was possible in Stardust, but only because Pete spent a lot of time rewriting the post-processing from Python to Java. Obviously, we can't do that for every deep learning model that comes out. Um, that's just too much work. And for selfos, where the post-processing is hundreds of thousands of lines of Python, uh, we just can't rewrite that in uh, in Java. So there is a solution. And uh, so PyTorch, which is an uh, it's an initiative developed by Meta, which is, well, previously Facebook, um, they've developed uh, this deep learning library in Python, where uh, a lot of models, including selfos, have been trained. And they uh, allow you to use this object called torch script. And I'm going to cut long story short, but essentially, if your operations are only simple, like linear algebra, you don't have a fancy algorithm like a watershed or connecting components, then you can actually package the whole thing inside a little package, a little, a little file called a torch script, and then you can literally drag it onto QPath and, um, and QPath will run it. There's no, the, the, the reason it works is that there's no fancy post processing that you have to re implement in Java or you don't need to run Python in the background because it's all compiled in this like lower language that uh, is common between Python and Java, and that's C++. Um, so unfortunately, all of the deep learning, um, all of the deep learning pipelines that we knew of, uh, you can actually run them from start to end using simple arithmetic operations. So they all involve like a watershed or something more fancy. So that's why uh, we actually, um, that's this been a, a year in the making, but we've actually developed our own pipeline uh, from start to end. We it was thought uh, we designed it so that um, it was only using these simple uh, algebra, uh, simple linear algebra uh, operations. You give it an image of input, deep learning model, so it's the same as Stardust or Selfos in run, 
And then the post-processing is all uh, simple arithmetics, and then at the end, you recover the labels. And that means that we can make a torch grid, this tiny little file that would run everything, the model plus the post-processing in the background, not in Python, not in Java. So that means you can run it in Python, you can run it in Java, you can run it as, uh, so through QPath, you can run it uh, also probably through DeepImageJ, although we haven't done that yet, but um, it, it supports uh, torch scripts. Uh, so here is, for example, uh, our own model, so we call it instance -like. This is the first time uh, that I, we mention it publicly. There'll be, I'll be talking about it more in detail on Friday, uh, if you're there for the uh, MIA conference. Um, and so this is a model running through QPath. Uh, it also provides GPU support. Uh, again, GPU install is, well, we've mentioned that before. It, it can be difficult, but the speed up is, is just dramatic. Um, and this is, so for example, an HNE model that we trained. We also trained uh, a whole cell model that doesn't uh, involve cell expansion. And this doesn't take just two input. Channel. So we said uh, for cell pose, it only takes a nuclei marker and then the me membrane marker. If you have multiple membrane markers, you have to merge them. Uh, this will take, um, well, hopefully it's still in development as many markers as you want. Uh, for the moment, uh, this particular example is actually a cheat and it's actually just three markers, uh, but we're working on it to uh, make that more available. So unfortunately, it's we decided not to release it uh, at the moment, but we are planning on a, like a recent, like a, incoming publication and then uh, this will be available uh all the models that we tr at least the models that we plan to train so for example this one on the top right and actually the one on the bottom left were trained on open source data so which means the pipeline hopefully will be completely open source and the data will also be uh open source so not have a non-commercial license on it and so hopefully uh we can run it through QPath with no licensing issues although again i'm no expert uh, I just show you some actually real world examples of it running. So not running through QPath, but the results from QPath. Um, it just took me a minute. Okay, so top left is self pose. Top right is QPath nuclei um, segmentation. Bottom right, uh, bottom right is Stardust uh, nuclei segmentation. And then bottom left is our instant seg method, which is trained on whole cell. So it took uh, all the channels rather than just two channels. Uh, uh, so I just, I mean, of course, this is just uh, like an example as qualitative as maybe if you run it with different parameters, you get different results. And I'm not, um, but this is just a, a, an example. So the stardust objects, they're, although they look nice, they're always very round uh, and you don't have any fancy shapes that you would have, for example, in, uh, in the QPath detection. Um, but it is highly accurate. Um, uh, yeah. And then the self is model, uh, yeah, you can see the advantage, for example, if you do like this whole cell, it doesn't, it's not just expanding around the nucleus. It doesn't go beyond, uh, uh, the, well, the end of the cell. <laughs> uh, so it might be better after it's for analysis. to show you so um that it's actually uh this instant method that went through it's actually uh it was designed to be quite efficient it's only simple arithmetic so it means it can be hugely accelerated on the gpu uh that's like a graphics card if you have one um and so i decided last night that i was going to segment the biggest image that i've got on my computer and i segmented every single nuclei there's nearly a million of them uh it took 14 minutes so i mean it's not instantaneous uh but so this is using a GPU and it's on a laptop, so it's not using like any like hugely fancy computer, but still using a pretty powerful GPU. Uh, it'll be slower, obviously, if you run it uh, through Mac. And I just wanted to, yeah, show you some of the, the images better than this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just show you some example. This is a, obviously a TMA. Uh, most of these samples are long, but they're not all long. Um, uh, this is uh, from collaborators of ours. Um, at the Beats Institute in Glasgow. Um, and yeah, it, it's um, definitely uh, promising and hopefully this will just be, uh, we're still in development, there's still artifacts uh, that we think we can uh, hopefully solve, for example, there uh, in the future. Uh, but it's still, uh, we think, uh, quite an accurate method. It runs fast and it's quite easy to install. And you can also uh, run it through uh, well, you don't have to run it through QPath, you can run it through Python, or you can run it through um, uh, DeepImageJ or any other platform. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs>
Um, Selfers, it will crash. Um, <laughs> Stardust is we found it was roughly I found it was roughly the same speed actually as the stack. So it's not like a whole order of magnitude faster than Stardust. It will be roughly the same speed. But Stardust is extremely efficient in the way that it processes the pixels. So what I mean by that is uh, we mentioned before it the the shapes of the cells are are you know the, the, these convex simple shapes, and that's because Stardust actually predicts the vertices of the objects. So instead of giving you like dense prediction where every pixel has a label, it just gives you like 32 numbers, which approximate 32 uh, vertices around the object. So that means the objects are simple, but it's also really efficient in terms of you don't need to produce this like fully like this dense output. You can just predict these uh, these objects. And that's why it works well with QPath because that's why also how QPath stores the detections, I believe. Um, but yeah, we found it was roughly the same speed as Stardust, way faster than cell -based. Uh Cell-based is not at all optimized for speed, it's for optimized for accuracy, in my opinion. Um, and then the QPath inbuilt cell detection is actually faster um, than both Stardust and this method, at least on the CPU. If you have GPU acceleration, then uh, this is fast. Uh, the the QPath and build segmentation doesn't support GPU acceleration at the moment or in the future, uh, but um, yeah, it's yeah. so it's not instant, but it's uh, it, it can be easily, and you can have like different threads on your computer, each like dealing with a different tile, and then feeding it to the GPU somehow without crashing. It, it works. Um, 